So, can you tell me once and for all, Mr. SharePoint, are you a database for Power Apps? Well, fine, if you won't answer, then I guess we're gonna to have to walk through all the details together and figure this out. So what we're gonna do that is we're gonna jump in there, we're gonna look at using SharePoint as a database, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what is a database, not too much, I promise. And then we're just gonna look at some of the different things, database characteristics we expect, and talk about does SharePoint do a good job, or a bad job, or even a better job at those things. We'll also check in on social media where I've got almost 700 people who have answered the question, see what their opinion is and learn lots of fun. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so we're over here in Power Apps, got a blank app. And the first thing we wanna do is go over here to data sources and say add data. And then we're going to search for SharePoint. And because I have the SharePoint connector that is there, we'll use my authentication. And then over here on the right, we can find our sites. So in this case, one called Power Apps Videos. And then if we scroll through the list here, you know, we got my employees list and we'll say connect. Okay, so there's the first answer to the question, right? Can SharePoint be a data source for Power Apps? The answer is yes, right? You can bolt it in there. Now, there we just added a SharePoint list, but a little bit different than a database, SharePoint is also great at storing files for your Power Apps. That's right, right? You can store files there so we can upload files to it. We can also pull those back in. The same type of thing, we go here to add data and if we search for SharePoint again, like so, right? And then connect in and go back to that same site. I guess I should have done this first time. So like immediately here, you can see that not only do we have all of the my list, but there's documents. So you can pull in document li libraries and also then access that data that way. So that's kind of a difference, right? Is that it is more than just a database if it's a database. And I think that's an important part of this conversation, right? People get really hung up on that question, like, is SharePoint a database? Does it really matter, right? Does SharePoint let you have tables of data? Yes. Does SQL Server have tables? Yes. Does Dataverse have tables? Yes. They all have tabular data. So it's similar in that way. They can all three be added as data sources. But then one of the cool things here that SharePoint does better than uh, any of those other places is the file storage, right? It is faster, it is more efficient, it is more user-friendly. And I'm not talking about doing attachments. I know you can do attachments um, with SharePoint and Dataverse, but attachments are not very good. Attachments are kind of hard to use. They're very cumbersome, you can't edit it. So I really just think of pure file storage. And yes, Dataverse has a file column. Uh, SQL Server even has a file column. They're both mediocre at best. So then the next piece of the puzzle I start to think about is the column types, right? Like, so if I open up SQL Management Studio here and go in, you know, there is a lot of column types here. I, there's column types I've never used. I don't even know what they are. You know, there's what? One, two, there's three different, four different date time ones that are, well, there's ints, there's floats, there's decimals, there's geography. I don't even know what any of this stuff is. It doesn't matter, right? But so when you think about a database, sometimes you think about all the broad range of columns it has. That can be fair, but remember, SharePoint has a lot of great columns as well, right? Which was over there. And so here's my lovely employees list. And if we go here to list settings, and so then there's the different columns I currently have. When we go to create a column, we're going to have some different options here. And, you know, if you think about it, like a number column, well, in SQL Server, we had the int and the float and the decimal and all those things. We just have a number column here. And the idea is that it's abstracted that from it. I don't have to figure out what's the difference between a decimal and a float because I've tried to figure it out and I don't understand either. It's okay, right? You just use a number column and it works it out for you. So you get some advantages of this being more user friendly in getting to columns. Not as precise though. Um, but then you also can do things like choice columns. So a choice column is where you say, hey, what's my favorite color? And then you set it up to, you know, red, blue, green and let the user pick. Guess what your traditional databases don't do? They don't have choice columns. Now, Dataverse does, but Dataverse, kind of like SharePoint, is more than a database in a lot of ways. So that's a little bit of a difference. Um, so different things here, but kind of consider that like your different columns, they all have different behaviors. Some of these are really good to use with SharePoint. Some of these make it really hard to use. So you want to kind of pick and choose correctly. Now, there's this special one as well we want to talk about, and that is the lookup column. So a lookup column is in SharePoint to do relationships. So if I want to be in this employees list and I want to do a lookup or connect to another table or list, like the departments want to pull in the department manager, department goals, whatever, then we do that through a lookup column, which creates a relationship. 
if you think about a true database, right? In school, that's all I learned about was databases. Blech. And, you know, we did so much around normalization and relationships and things. But really, yes, you know, fancy databases do a great job of relationships. But in reality, you end up defining the primary keys, the foreign keys, and gluing all that together. Once again, SharePoint and Dataverse for its uh, fact as well, they both abstract all that, right? When I say use a lookup column and get stuff out of the, you know, departments list, it it doesn't care. It doesn't say, okay, Shane, you know, I need you to set up a foreign key. Can you tell me if that's a one to many, many to one, many to many? It it abstracts all that from me. It just works. So interesting, right? Like I think this is one of those big advantages. Or if you go into like Dataverse, which we're not really supposed to talk about Dataverse, but I'm going to anyway, you know, it even has ways to drill into those relationships and it understands them from both ways. So sometimes, you know, saying, well, you know, SharePoint's not a referential SQL database, you know, for relationships. It's not, but it does what I need it to do and it does it with all that, all the, without all that extra work as well. Now, if you're a DBA nerd, I, I was one of those once upon a time, I get it. You're thinking about all of the referential integrities and all of the things, you know, you're right. SharePoint is not going to do as much of that for you. But if you think about it in your database server, you do a lot of that yourself manually also. And so if, you do, if you're okay doing that manually on the database side to keep all the referential integrity, two SharePoint lists could do the same maybe? I don't know. How about scale? All right, so this is a place that <laughs> SharePoint stinks. Uh, you know, if you go check the official SharePoint documentation, it will tell you that one SharePoint list can have 30 million items. No, right? Is it possible? Okay, fine. But you're never going to use those 30 million items, right? Like basically it's saying, if you just dump data in here, you never try to get it back from me. You definitely don't try to edit it. You just want to plow data in here. A list could take 30 million items. If you want it to be, you know, editing, searching, filtering, using it, not going to happen. Okay. So 30 million out. Um, whereas, you know, if you told me you want to put 30 million items in a SQL database, I'd yawn a little bit and say, no big deal. Okay. So that's important to think about, but so where is the scale for SharePoint? When I think about SharePoint scale for being a backend, especially for a power app, I think of single digit thousands. Now, sometimes you'll hear people say, we can't have more than 2000 because of the delegation limit. If you're going to do a non-delegable query, then yeah, you need to consider the 2000 limit unless you got ways to nest queries. Like we're not getting into the things, right? But don't think of 2000 as a hard limit. Um, sometimes you hear people say 5,000 is the limit. Also not completely true. So one of the keys, if you're going to use SharePoint as a data source and you want to be able to access columns and, and do things, um, over here, there is the ability to set up a index for a column, right? Index columns. And so I have found that if you set up a column to be indexed, then it supports up to about 25,000. Now, I will still say it's not a good idea. That is probably still too much data. You're going to, you know, the way I tell my customers, right? The more data you put in SharePoint for every new thousand records you put into a SharePoint list that is being fronted by a power app, right? Every thousand items, I can feel the app get a little slower. So 1,000, fine. 2,000, fine, right? I get it to 10,000, I'm like, oh, I can feel some slowness here, right? Get to 20,000, like, I can feel some slowness here, right? It's like me on my little walker. So, just be cognizant of that. But this index columns, this can get you out to about 25,000. I think that's too much, but it, it will work um, for that. How about security? Hey, while you're learning all this, go sign up for one of my training classes, training.powerapps911.com. It'll be awesome. So security is somewhere I think SharePoint wins, right? So if you think about it, when I set up security for SQL, I'm really setting it at the table level, right? I'm saying, hey, SQL server, here's your... Uh, you know, table security, right? What people can and can't do. I assign roles. I can kind of configure that. But SharePoint, like if we really wanted to, we can get down and manage even item level permissions in SharePoint. It's not a good idea. It's a lot of work. Uh, it's very manual and tedious. Doesn't scale well. But technically speaking, SharePoint can do more security. If you switch over to Dataverse, right, which once again, I struggle to just consider it a SQL Server either. Right? Maybe we should do the same type of video for Dataverse. But um, you know, in Dataverse, 
Over there, we can do table security, uh, row security. We can even do column security. We can do org, like hierarchical, whatever that word is, security. Like Dataverse has got the best data source security flexibility. But the Dataverse stuff is really not user-friendly still to use. I right? don't tell the product team I said it, but it's still really hard to use. SharePoint security, pretty straightforward to set up, pretty flexible. So I don't know, I feel like this is a, a feather in SharePoint's cap. What about if you're doing, you know, ALM or software life cycle development cycles, whatever SLDC is, you know, what if you're trying to do things like we're moving stuff from dev to test to production? SharePoint's a terrible data source for that, right? Uh, Power App Solutions, they kind of work, eh, they, they work with SharePoint lists, but it's not as smooth as if you do it in Dataverse. But like replicating SharePoint lists into three locations, there's not really an easy way to do that. Whereas if you think about with Dataverse, man, it's just packaged right into your solutions. Or if you're doing it with SQL Server, well, to create the, the table in dev and test and prod, we're just using the same create table statement, and there it is. So I would definitely give, you know, the whole application lifecycle management story. I'd say SharePoint is very weak as a data source for that. Um, whereas I think Dataverse is perfection and, you know, SQL Server is somewhere between the two of those. Now, one other point I want to make as you're thinking about this, this one's a little controversial, so I apologize now. Not that this whole video wasn't controversial, but another thing that people don't really love about Power Apps that are not, that are traditional DBAs, right? So if you're a traditional database administrator type, you know, you love database normalization. Database normalization is where you take one giant wide table and you break it up into as many small tables as you can and you put it together with relationships and the idea is you don't want any repetitive data, right? Like, so if there's an employee list and then you've got a department field and then department manager, some people are just like, all right, my table has, you know, employee name, department name, and department manager, and that's just one table. A DBA is like, hey, we should have that in a separate departments table where you just create the relationship, and then that way you don't have to, you know, the department manager changes, you just change it in one place instead of all the records. Totally makes sense. I agree. The problem is, is that sometimes Power Apps doesn't agree, right? Sometimes Power Apps does not like properly normalized data that's, you know, everything's in 1700 tables, because then to show you data in the gallery, I got to do all these lookups and all these fetches and my performance gets really bad. So think about that as well when you're caught up in this whole conversation around is SharePoint a database? Sometimes a proper database is not what your Power App wants. Your Power App wants just one table with all the data in there. And if the department manager changes, well, you got to update it in all the places. I'm sorry, but that is going to make your app more performant. So go make your skin crawl, but sometimes normalization, sometimes all those, you know, database concepts are actually not wins for us on the, you know, making my Power App just work, which is what I care the most about. All right, on LinkedIn here, I have gotten 636 votes in the last, I don't know, probably been four hours or so. 73% um, of people said, is SharePoint a database? Yes. Um, I did the same thing over on Twitter or X, whatever you call that thing. Uh, a little bit different ratio. It was about 60-40 split over there of yeses. So as a rule, people think of it. I would say if you were asking me, is SharePoint a database? I would say yes, right? in the terms of Power Apps, because in Power Apps, I, Power Apps doesn't really care if it's a database, right? Power Apps says, is it a data source? It is a data source. Can I connect to the tables? Yes. Can I have relationships? Yes. Can I have security? Yes. Does it do all the things I need to do to build apps? Yes. What is the most popular data source in the world for Power Apps? It is SharePoint, right? I don't have official stats on that, but I'm positive that's the answer. Um, so is it a database in my book? Yes. Can you make a lot of arguments for no, it's not, or no, I shouldn't be using it the way I am? Yes, right? I definitely agree that the main reason that SharePoint is the most popular data source is because it's the best free data source, right? It is used with a standard license. If you want to use a proper traditional real database, sorry, I'm putting air quotes around all this, um, then you've got to use what? You've got to get a premium Power Apps license to go use Dataverse, SQL Server, those type of things. That is money well spent, right? Dataverse is the best place to put data at the end of the day. But 
I know that some of you don't get to make the licensing decisions. The fact that you're building on top of SharePoint and the hoops you might be jumping through to make it work the way you want, it's causing tech debt, right? Like that's a fact. It's a fact you can't change. So let's embrace it. Like let's not get hung up and you know be judgy and say, oh, you're using SharePoint as a data source. You don't know what you're doing. Okay, so what did you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you gonna leave me angry comments below? That's fine. I'm I'm here for them. Let's talk about it. I can tell you LinkedIn, I think there's, there's 56 comments already. Like I said, we're three hours into this question on a holiday weekend and we've got 56 comments. So join the conversation, whether it's over on LinkedIn, YouTube comments, over on X, I don't care. Tell us what you think, share your thoughts. What did I not think of? I'm always game for that. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.